Hi, my name is Becca. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a reading vlog. In today's vlog, I'm going to be reading The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. This is kind of a cozy, magical realism, sweet little book. If you're interested, I hope that you will stick around. And while you're here, if you want to subscribe to my channel and like this video, I'd really appreciate it. I'm also going to be doing a little bit of cleaning and resetting my space just to get off to a fresh start. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me and I hope you enjoy the vlog. Tuesday and I haven't read anything yet today but I figure I should update you on what I'm even reading and how it's going. I've just been kind of getting organized today working on my reading journal and doing some like admin stuff on my computer. I have been reading a few books. The first one is a reread and it's Red, White, and Royal Blue. I read it back in 2019 and I think I loved it so much and I gave it five stars. And the adaptation, uh, the Prime Video movie, is coming this week, I think. So I wanted to quickly reread it because it's been so long and I'm having fun with it. I'm reading it on my Kindle. It's on Kindle Unlimited right now. I definitely don't love it as much as I used to and like the whole story is coming back to me. So maybe it's because I know what's going to happen that um, it's not like the same kind of like butterfly inducing experience, but it is good and I'm enjoying the characters and stuff like that. So that's what I did there. And then I have been reading In the Woods by BK Borison over the weekend and I even started it like two weekends ago. So for me to be still reading a romance this much later is very abnormal for me. I usually read it in like one or two days. So I think that kind of tells you that I don't love this. I don't know what it is. So I'm on page 218. So I really don't have that much left. So I'm trying not to DNF it. But I think because this is not a spoiler because this is like in the opening chapters, because they already got together. And you know that in the last book, like he, Beckett is our main guy and the main girl is named Evie. They have a one night stand at like a conference that they're both at or that Beckett's at but she's in that town for a different reason I don't remember but well, they already have a one night stand and you you kind of um get to see that at the beginning so I don't know maybe the tension's not there for me it is this is like grumpy sunshine Beckett's the grumpy farmer and Evie's kind of the the happy social media influencer but you know what else is I don't really like books about influencers like I can't think of a single book where someone's an influencer and I'm like wow really liked reading about that I usually try to stay away from that I mean, this does have the farm setting that I love. Beckett's house is really cozy and Beckett has a bunch of like meddling sisters, which I like and that's fun. So it has elements that I like. We just had like a spicy scene. I believe that they really like each other, but I'm kind of like, I don't really care. So I don't know. I can't see it being more than three stars at this point, but I'm gonna finish it because I'm so close and I bought this, so. But I liked Love Light Farms way more than this one. So just, that's just a disclaimer. Okay. So yeah, that's what I've been reading, those two books. This week, I also really want to get to a book I got yesterday at Barnes & Noble. 
The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I have heard people rave about this and everyone's giving it five stars. I did read the first chapter last night and it is so cozy. Like it's very magical vibes. It's about a island called, there's a map so I can just look it up and show you. It's called Clock Island. And it has everything labeled, which I think is really magical, about a the writer of the books that are about this island, but the island also seems to be a real place. I'm not sure what's happening yet, but so far I have Hugo and I have Jack and I have a couple of kids who have read the Clock Island books. So I will tell you what's actually happening when I get farther into it, but I do want to try to read this this week and finish In the Weeds and Red, White, and Boil Blue, and we will see if I can get to anything else. But that is the update for now. tripod sucks it is friday and it is august 11th and i have only finished one book this month I'm, and that is because i kind of lost days and days to obsessing about heartstopper season two and i know if you're watching this video you probably love heartstopper too because the booktube community loves heartstopper and I am not the first person to love Heartstopper, so I do not need to gush about it. But yeah, that led to me rereading volume three and four of the comic and rewatching the show and listening to the soundtrack and <laughs> watching all the TikTok fan edits of clips from the season. So I hope my obsession can ramp down now since it's been a full week of uh, <laughs> since I watched the show. Anyway. I have been reading, as of last night, I read, I've read 75 pages of The Wishing Game, and I understand the hype because this is so fucking cute. Oh my gosh, it's making, like, my childlike wonder, like, come alive inside this combined with Heartstopper, like, vibes are good. This, last time I updated you, I'm like, I don't know what this is about. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> this is about an island called Clock Island and it's based on this like famous children's book series and we have Lucy who is 26 now but as a child she had a kind of a tough upbringing a little bit abandoned emotionally so her the Clock Island books were kind of her refuge and they mean so much to her and now at 26 she is going through some stuff in her life the Clock Island book author has not released any new books in quite a long time and there's like 65 Clock Island books so it's it's a very established series. So there's a new book written and there's a contest that's happening on the island that one person will get to have that single copy of the book. And yeah there's more to it and there's some other characters involved but that's kind of the gist of it. And the thing I'm loving about this is ha the storytelling. So you're there's a bunch of characters. There's some alternating perspective chapters, but each of the characters feels really unique in their perspective. Like it's easy to tell. The island itself feels really magical and the house feels magical. And I just feel like I'm there. And it's just, this is very cozy, very cozy. So I think people who are fans of cozy fantasy are gonna really like this and I know that this is supposed to be like a magical realism type book so I can't wait to see how that plays out because I can already get some like magical vibes from this and I'm just really excited yeah and I am obsessed with this cover and you know this is like giving the same vibe as the midnight library in my opinion I just thought that's what I thought of but I love this a lot more. So yeah, so far there's a lot of dialogue in here about making wishes and what that means to kids and even adults and I am kind of like loving that. Like sometimes you just need to wish for things even as an adult. So I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm going to keep reading. 
I'm definitely going to finish this this weekend. This is only like 286 pages. So I'm, you know, probably already a third of the way in. I did not finish In the Weeds and I have not finished Red, White, and Royal Blue, although the movie Red, White, and Royal Blue did come out today. So I probably will read it to, or I'll probably watch it tonight anyway because I know what happens in the book. I really think I might just DNF In the Weeds because I so don't want to pick it up again, but I'm not going to force myself to. So I don't know what this reading vlog is turning into, but this is going good. I'm not going to talk about In the Weeds anymore because I'm just going to like soft DNF that, I think. But yeah. Red, White, and Real Blue, I've already read it. It's still sweet and funny, and I can't wait to see the movie, so. All right, that is all I have to say right now. Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer was such a sweet read. I felt like such a child reading this and I, the magicalness and the wonder of the characters really just flew off the page and I think that this book is probably so beloved because of the nostalgia factors. I've been seeing this hyped up so much and I'm actually really glad that I didn't know a lot about it before I picked it up because I probably wouldn't have picked it up because it is a kind of a retelling of Willy Wonka and fun fact about me is that I hate Willy Wonka and I find it to be very scary and I was really afraid of that movie growing up just because people go into this factory with this weird man and some of them never come out. You know, there's so much like imagery in the, in the movie that I just found really unsettling I guess as a kid so Willy Wonka stuff is not for me however this was really good I think that like part of this was was more like Ready Player One versus Willy Wonka that's just me because Ready Player One is very warm to me and, and like Ready Player One is one of my favorite movies and I've only read half the book but um you kind of you know the vibe if you've if you've read it or seen the movie this book follows multiple characters, but Hugo and Lucy are the two main characters, I would say, because it has alternating um, perspectives. Probably more about Lucy, but Lucy um, is in her 20s and she's had a really, a pretty traumatic childhood. So she's trying to kind of recover from that while also being a very poor 20 year old who works as a teacher's aide. You know, I think I was annoyed by some of this, the ways that Lucy reacted in this, but at the same time, it's realistic because she never really got to be a kid. So she's, she kind of acts childish in this book. And I thought that that is really believable and just kind of a refreshing perspective. So while Lucy was not my favorite character I've ever read by a long shot, I still felt she had some redeemable qualities. I felt so many things about this book. I was definitely annoyed by some of her actions. I was not very into the the motherhood themes about like Lucy really wanting to be a mom. I just felt like it was a, a little much, but I really liked that there are storylines in here about foster care and wanting to kind of lie it kind of on the system of, of some of the the broken parts so I think that's important and I loved Christopher as a character. Christopher is a kid in this who has kind of a a big role and he just was really fun to read about and I wasn't annoyed. Sometimes kids are annoying in books, he was not, he was really sweet. This has some romance, this has some magical realism and I think it's it's more on the real side, like it was realistic I think and you get to go away to Clock Island and you really feel like you're there and it's very atmospheric and magical and just fun and I love how detailed the descriptions were of the different areas within the island. There's so much going for this book that I recommend it. I think I'm gonna give this four and a half stars. It's not a full five star for me because of some of the choices that were made and some of the stuff that was like irritating me while I read it, but the, I really read this very quickly and I am so glad I did because I felt the sense of being home and as it, it, I feel like this will heal some of your inner child if you felt any kind of comfort or solace in reading books as a kid to get away from your 
life and I feel like if people especially if you had like a difficult childhood this is something that you might really appreciate and love and yeah I'm just really glad this book exists and I just think that this book it was different and you know what I enjoyed seeing in this is the green glass door and if you have ever played that around a campfire you know and so I felt really smart that I knew this game already so yeah no spoilers from me but this one was really fun Thank you.